A Day at the Beach, story by Go Team Sluns, art by Go Team Sluns. Chapter 105, Glassophobic Cephalopoth. Luki, a lanky Cecilia softly called out to one of her friends as she gingerly approached them, not wanting to startle either of them. Here, replied the little Cyclops enthusiastically as he spun around, a wide smile on his face. Oh, I get it, she replied. Luki here. Haha, <laughs> funny. A smile barely visible appearing on her face. Hanji wasn't very expressive in general. Rarely in public and occasionally with her friends. She wasn't depressed, that's just the way her personality worked. And her friends knew that. Hi Isla, said Tanji to Luki's sister of equal proportions. How are you guys? We're just fine, thank you for asking, she replied smiling. And you? Just fine, thank you for asking, she replied in kind. That's good, Isla replied. Did you bring anything? No, I don't have any beach equipment since I generally don't care to go. And since I don't wear anything, how could I? Oh. Tenji glanced upward and towards your left. My hair. That's okay. We have everything we need. Including snorkels, added Luki. A reluctant expression quickly formed across Tanti's face. You guys know the ocean makes me nervous. Don't worry, buddy, assured Luki. We won't go too deep. Yeah, exclaimed Isla. We'll only go well, we're sure it's safe. And how can you be sure which areas are truly safe, asked Tanji with worried eyebrows. Because this area of the beach is known to be frequently, to be frequented by mermaids. And mermaids where not go where it isn't safe. Oh, um, really? Where did you learn this? The library. Ah, I see. Mermaids. Luki feeling intrigued, asked, Have you ever seen a mermaid, Tanji? No, none that I can remember of, she replied. But then, I hardly remember any of the oceans since I didn't like it there. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out that I left the day I was born. Really, remarked the Psychoff siblings in unison. Yep, who knows. And since I've never found anyone I can relate to, I never asked the Cecilia I spotted in Shell of Waters. I do find it unfortunate that mermaids are unable to freely traverse land. That's true, admitted Isla. Yes, that is true, concurred Luki. Yep. So, Luki, what was that idea you wanted to tell me about? Oh, yes, exclaimed Luki. If you don't want to be seen, use your chromatophores to disguise yourself as a beach ball. I suppose that they worth, replied Tanji. But couldn't I just change my color to match the sand? Yes, she replied, but then you can't be seen at all. And Isla and I, or somebody else, could accidentally pop into you. True, admitted Tanji. All right, then. Thank you for the suggestion, buddy. You're welcome, buddy. Well, I guess I'll look for a nice place to sit in the water and look at the scenery. Okie dokie, we'll just be playing volleyball for now. Do come back if you start feeling lonely, chimed Myla. I will, she replied as she started off toward the shore. Upon scanning the shore, she noticed a lighthouse in the distance. Hmm, she thought. Perhaps that lighthouse has rocks at its base I could sit on. Then she didn't think it to herself, rather she sittered audibly. As a side effect of intelligence, or at least certain types, she talked to herself regularly. Surely enough, upon approaching the lighthouse, Tanji noticed in front of the base of Glen, the structure was placed. There was a wide, flat rock curving slightly upwards out of the water, connected by a slender underwater isthmus. That might be a nice place to rest, Tanji said. Taking her way down to the water, she prepared herself to jump across the small gap. She would need to use her six lower limbs to repel herself across. Easy enough, but would it support her weight? This rock will probably support my weight, thought Tanji. After all, I don't have any bones. Upon making the leap, she cautiously paused after landing to make sure her suspicions were correct. With arms in an apprehensive position, her eyes darted this way and that, looking and listening for signs of a potential collapse. After 15 seconds, Tanji felt confident the platform would hold. Looking at the sky, she noticed multiple Kimolonimbus clouds. There was a scenic sight, and that made her smile. Maybe it will rain, she thought. Tanji loved scenic views because they filled her with wonder, and all the more so did rain. She was enjoying her time alone, as do all introverts who need time alone. Chapter 2 Drive Chapter 2 of Finds Within the ordinary, therein lies true beauty. Some time had passed, oh half an hour, 
Tangie's overactive mind was deeply lost in thoughts and memories as she stirred at the horizon of giant clouds and water. The train of thought was interrupted when she noticed a sudden shimmering beneath the water's surface, about ten feet in front of her. Whatever it was, it was long and moved quickly beneath the water. Is that what I think it is? said Tangie. Taking Luki's advice, she contracted and scrunched herself into a sphere, altering the color of half of her tentacles to mimic the appearance of a beach ball. She felt a small gap between her two front tentacles, but she left a small gap between the two front tentacles to peer through with her right eye. No matter how amazing a discovery may be, no introvert dislikes anything more than meeting a stranger that have prepared themselves to meet. Well, besides performing on stage, perhaps. The shimmering glow beneath the water suddenly ceased moving, where in its place a figure started rising out of the water. Yep, thought Tangie. Just as I thought, it's a mermaid. Only well, this time she didn't say it out loud. The mermaid appeared to have silver scales. That must have been responsible for the shimmering glow. Tangie closed her people as the mermaid's gaze turned towards her direction. The mermaid curiously approached the beach ball lookalike. What's this? she asked. She said, It looks like someone forgot their beach ball. Does it still have full air in it, I wonder? Reaching for the ball, she tried to take it from the rock, but it wouldn't bud. Huh? Shake slow. Wait a second. There are suction cups on this ball. Either someone wanted to play a trick or... She paused for a moment as she came to the realization. Or this isn't a beach ball at all. It's an octopus who's being shy. Ah, uh, don't be shy, she said before giving the sphere a knock twice. Come on out. Tangily, Tangy, Gingerly, Changi, Gingerly, detracted from her disguise. The mermaid's eyes of Ivan. Oh, you're not an octopus. You're a, you're a, a Cecilia, said Tangy, filling in her sentence. Oh, that's right. I've heard of you guys, but I've never actually seen one of you in person. You're quite an amazing sight. Um, thank you, replied Tangy nervously. You too. Thank you, my name's Sylvia Skeeler, but you can just call me Sylvie for short. Tangela Reen, or Tangy for short, like Angela and Angie with the T in front. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Sylvie exclaimed happily. I think you're a pretty Cecilia. Thank you, but know that I don't care to look or feel pretty, replied Tangy with a slight smile. To me it matters much more what's on the inside. There's beauty in the ordinary. That there is, replied Sylvie with an expression of deep thought in her face. Well, regardless, tangerine is a unique and vivid color. I think it suits you well. Thank you. As to your silver skills. Uh, thank you. I do like the way they sparkle under light, but they can't attract unwanted attention. I see. So what do you like to do, asked Sylvie curiously. Normally I like to spend time alone at the library or anywhere that's tranquil and quiet. Oh, you do seem a little quiet. Are you shy? I'd prefer the term introverted, explained Tanji. I have layers that tend to talk more when discussing meaningful and interesting topics rather than trivial or frivolous matters. Oh, all right. As for me, I like to play hide-and-seek in the kelp forest with the other sea creature. As a matter of fact, that's where I just came from. That's fun. It is, said Vidis Holby, and kelp makes good bandages. But do you come up to land often? Yes. With Tandy's reserved personality, she understandably didn't want to explain that she actually rather visited the water rarely. The you had no need to explain. What's it like to be able to freely move on land? As Sophia was wonder glimming, gleaming in her eyes. To go anywhere you want. Oh, um, that's nice, answered Tangie carefully as to not make the mermaid feel sorrowful. That's not all that amazing. Once in a while you might see something that looks quite serene. But I'm sure under the water there's nearly always something beautiful to see. There's indeed much I've taken for granted. She stirred off an expression of deep thought in her face. Really, remarked Sylvia, surprised. You're sure? Uh, well... In my opinion, I think what might be the most breathtaking and freeing experience of all is to fly above and throw out the clowns. But who knows, until they've tried each of them. Perhaps. Nevertheless, I so would like to know what it feels like to walk. This qualifies as a meaningful discussion, wouldn't you say, friend? Certainly, agreed Tanji. You and I don't entirely know what it feels like to walk, at least in terms of human walking. I suppose that's true. I don't care to walk specifically like a human or in any specific way for that matter. I just want to walk. I see. So Tanji, what do you want? Deep down, what do you really want more than anything? Well, Sylvie, I'm pretty much content with what I have and how I am. 
There is something I really would love to discover, and though it is impossible to completely exist, it's possible I can still find something extremely close. What's that? asked Sylvie with an eager expression. Someone just like me. A fellow Cecilia? No, a fellow. Before Kenji could finish her sentence, a flying volleyball made contact with her boneless head, which momentarily flattened as it absorbed its impact before bouncing off into the water. Chapter 3 of 5 Integrity over Discomfort Ouch! Are you okay? asked Sylvie concerned. I'm fine, replied Tanji as her head quickly reflated. I don't have any bones, only cartilage. From my head to my arms and chest. It's not anywhere as bad as it looks. Oh, right. Sylvie glanced down at the ball flowing in the water. I'll just go ahead and send this ball back where it came. Debbie underwater, Sylvie swam to the sandy bottom and rushed back to the water's surface, grabbing the ball as she leaped out. Performing a somersault, she gave the ball a swat with a powerful tail. Went flying far over the nearby embankment of rock surrounding the lighthouse. Great shot, the Mark Kanji enthusiastically. She really did mean it. Thanks. My pleasure. Kanji glanced back at the lighthouse for a few seconds. Hmm. I think I have an idea, Sophie. What? Maybe someone works at that lighthouse. Someone who works there may only know how to operate the light. But perhaps there's a chance they may be more familiar with creating devices and machinery. I'm not sure I follow you, replied Sylvie confused. But this in mind, she decided not to further detail her idea, so that the mermaid would not be given any false hope. That's okay, just do me a favor, will you? Sure, what do you mean? I need you to kick, er, whap, me, onto the balcony of that lighthouse. That way, I won't have to work up the courage to knock on the door. I'm too nervous to find out if my suction cups will support my weight if it were to call up. Sylvie looked concerned. What if I can't send you high enough? What if no one's there? I could even accidentally send you over the lighthouse. I'll take those risks, she replied contently. I should stick some white if you should send me too low. And if you send me too high, my tentacles can reach a bit blank. And if anything happens, just know that I'm to blame, not you. It was my idea. Okay. I'll do it, agreed Sylvie in a tone real somber. Thank you, replied Tanji with a small smile. Readying herself to be launched, she contracted like into a sphere. In need of no camouflage as time, she resembled an orange after it had been peeled. Or a white pumpkin. A good disguise come fall. You might be wondering, was she scared? Absolutely. Angela was terrified. The whole situation made her drastically uncomfortable. But she knew she had the opportunity to change this mermaid's life. It was far more important than any fear, discomfort, or anxiety. Had someone gone with her to the lighthouse, she could knock on a door just fine. But Sylvie could not go with her, and she did not yet feel comfortable introducing her friends. After all, she had only just met Sylvia. Taking Tanji in her arms, Sylvie quickly dove under the water swimming down to the sandy bottom, before curving back upward towards the surface. All in a mere second, just as she had done with the volleyball. Tanji expected the water to be unpleasantly cold, but it wasn't. There was a pleasant cold temperature, though it was a delightful feeling as the water brushed against the soles of her six feet. Had she completely forgotten the warmth and wonder of underwater life? She had no time to ponder it. As Sylvie leapt from the water high into the air, Tanji tightly closed her eyes, bracing for the potentially painful impact of Sylvie's fatal fins. Wap! It was a relief to discover that it only stinged a little, otherwise completely fun. She zoomed through the air straight towards the nearby lighthouse. As she began to descend, she started unraveling to prepare herself for landing. Hopefully. Squish. Tanji had successfully made contact with the lighthouse, albeit not in the preferred area of the lighthouse. Rather than landing on the balcony tentacles first, she managed to land on the front side of her entire body into the side of the lighthouse, just below its balcony. For a moment, she stuck there for a full couple seconds before slowly peeling off like a sticker that loses its adhesity. She was dizzy and dazed, and in such an unconscious state, her state of mind could not enable any reaction to her perilous situation. But she regained her composure in time. Just as the last of her limbs lost its footing, it was grabbed by a sudden long mechanical arm reaching down from the balcony. 
They grabbed her top left tentacle to be precise. Gotcha, Aitlin last, explained a voice from above. Chapter 4 of 5, The Cheerful Giver Dangling by her tentacle, Tanji regained her consciousness to behold the upside-down image of what appeared to be a scientist, or possibly... an inventor? A robotic arm grasping her leg connected to a device held by the mysterious subject. Don't worry, my dear Cecilia, said the gray-haired grockle-eyed human of small stature. Well, unless you countered his hair. You're safe now thanks to my robotic extension grabber, or rag, for short. Thank you so much. I'm eternally grateful to you for catching me, replied Epic Boulder Tangela. But would you be so kind as to place me on the balcony to remove my nervousness? Oh, of course, replied the supposed adventurer, before quickly rotating the arm over the balcony. Pressing a button on the remote, the arm released Tangi from its grip. She landed chest first, with the lower half of her body suspended above her head. Sorry, lass, it's a good thing you don't have a bone in your body. Even if you knew she didn't have any bones, it was a painful sight to see. I concur, agreed Tandy as she left her soft to her feet. No worries, it didn't hurt in the slightest. That's relief to hear, in Renta replied. Yep. Yeah. Do you work here? No, he replied. I just come here to observe. My name is Professor Oscar Zerv, or for short, Professor Ozerv. I'm Tangela Ring, or Tangi for short, replied Tangi. It's nice to meet you. Likewise, my dear, concurred Professor. So, you come here to observe? Yes. Where I live, there's not much to see besides deer, not that deer aren't breaks full elephant creatures. If you know anything about this beach, then you might know what exactly I'm looking the cat's sight up here. Oh, um, yes, replied Tanji knowingly. I couldn't help but notice that it seemed as though you have a knack for inventing. Why, oh, yes, explain, and thank you for noticing. You're welcome. Tanji forced her nervous smile as she prepared herself to ask a favor as well as for the potential embarrassment of the tripping and fumbling of words that would likely occur due to her type of intelligence. But as it would turn out, she wouldn't need to, much to her relief. Look behind you, said Observe eagerly. Tanji had been so focused on preparing herself to ask her favor, that she hadn't fully taken in her new surroundings. Behind her sat a small wooden work table, was what appeared to be a metal belt placed on top. Attached to the belt was what appeared to be four noodle-like limbs. Oh, what is it? asked Tanji with a curious smile. It's a mermaid locomotion enabler belt, or bleb for short. This belt is, that is designed to telepathically connect to the mind of who wears it. By wearing this belt, a mermaid will be able to tell the connected legs what to do anything she wants them to, allowing her to walk. And since the feet are designed to stick to any surface, she's not limited the ground locomotion, much like you are at my cephalopod friend. Oh, well, replied Tanji, astonished. You must be very proud. Yes, my dear Tanji, I am, replied Ozerb enthusiastically. I'm happy to make a difference in the lives of others. Helping others makes me happy. I give because it's the right thing to do. I may not be able to change the world, but I can surely and certainly make a difference. Now, said the professor, rubbing his chin, if only I could find a mermaid. It should fit snugly on the facine half of her body, just below her waist. A wide ear to ear smile was now spread across Tanji's face. With a raised pointer finger, she said, Follow me. <laughs> Chapter 5 of Hyde You Reap What You Sow. There were tears in Sylvie's eyes as she beheld her new four, uh, as she beheld her four new robotic legs raising her body above the sand. I, I can't believe this. Her voice was quivering as she tried to speak. You've made my dream come true, come true. The light on the front of the belt now illuminating a bright green, showing that it had successfully worked. You're welcome, said Botanji and, prof and the professor simultaneously. How could I ever repay you? asked Tanji brushing away the tears streaming down her face. You'll repay me simply by wearing it, my dear, replied Ozerb happily. I must say, it suits you well. Yes, said Tanji. I don't need anything in return either. Returning to Tanji, Sylvie's eyes were gleaming. At the very least, I owe you this. Upon saying this, she immediately used her four noodly legs to quickly approach Tanji before giving her a massive heartfelt hug. None of this would have been possible without you in the first place. That's true, but it wasn't just me and the professor. It was also thanks to the powerful tell you've been blessed with. Oh, I guess so, admitted Sylvie, still hugging Tanji. Thank you eternally for enabling me to experience your world. 
It was my utmost pleasure. A smile clearly visible began spreading on Tanji's face. But know that this really isn't my wall. I just live in it. I sparsely think like it. Sylvie glanced at the lap as she thought about what Tanji meant. Oh, and to answer your question, Sylvie, what I desire most more than anything is to find someone who thinks this like me. There's nothing I wouldn't find more amazing. Well, I hope you find what you're looking for. I'm not sure how similar we are, but regardless, you found a new best friend for sure. Okie dokie, replied Tanji, still smiling. Feel free to put me down when you're ready, but take your time, buddy. Too bad we don't have any tissues, said Luki. Yeah, or any handkerchiefs, added Isla. And 